How's it going everybody? Jason here. Welcome to part two of recording drums with the Elisa Strike Pro kit. So part one, I just focused on audio recording using the line outs and the individual outs. This one, I'll be focused just on MIDI. So I'm gonna go through three things. The first one is how do you connect your strike module to your computer? Second thing, how do you set up the Strike Pro and configure it so it's ready for MIDI recording? And the third thing, we'll be looking at some MIDI mapping with the Logic Drummer and the Steven Slate SSD5 plugin. So number one, looking at hooking it up to your computer. This is pretty simple. It has a USB output, comes with a USB cable, plug it in, you're good to go. It does work with USB-C as well. So any Mac users that are stuck with that USB-C, you won't need an adapter cable. You will just need a USB-C cable and it works fine. That's important because some pieces of hardware I've used actually don't work with USB-C. They, you have to get an adapter cable and use it. So the strike works fine with that. The second way to hook it up is if you do have an audio interface, you can use the MIDI output from the strike module to the MIDI input of your audio interface. So it does have a MIDI in, um, a MIDI out and a MIDI through port on the back of the Strike Pro. So if you don't have an audio interface, no big deal. You can plug it in right through USB and you're good to go. So the second thing is looking at some of the settings in the Strike module. So the first thing is going into the utility menu into MIDI. This is where you can change what channel the drums are being sent through. So uh, by default, it's set to Omni. That means it's gonna send the signal out through all channels. You can change and customize this. So if you're just using the strike for recording drums through MIDI, leave it at Omni. If you are using it in a live setting and you have uh, multiple different types of routing for different MIDI devices, you might have to maybe change some of those settings there. The next is going into the trigger section. So this is where I'll get into this more in the MIDI mapping section, but this is where you can turn off things like cymbal choke, hi-hat splash, and the articulation of the hi-hat. So the Strike does have the ability to do cymbal chokes. When you do set up your kit, make sure that the Strike logo is on the outside or facing outwards because the choke point is on the close side for you. It's just one part of the edge sensor there. But you can turn that on or off. And a little preview for the MIDI mapping is there's no way to map the actual choke of the Strike Pro symbols in the module itself, which leads me to the next part of setting up your module. When you go into the uh, voice section, FX MIDI, into the MIDI section, this is where you can customize the notes. So by default, it's set up pretty well. If you see the status bar and logic there, you can see the notes depending on what drum it is that I'm hitting. That's controlled through the MIDI note section here. So you can see on the strike screen, it's changing as well. So you can see what notes are being sent into your DAW. And if you wanted to map any of the triggers to something different, you would actually have to set it up through here. So one thing I do, and I mentioned on the audio recording video, is I like to use the rims of the drums for percussion. You'd actually have to go in and map those, which I'll get into in a second. So the other thing that you can do here with your MIDI um, options for all of your drums is you can change the channel for each of them. So again, if you're just recording the strike through USB to just record drums, leave it at default. Um, and don't worry about it. But if you wanna trigger other things or trigger automation or do anything else within your DAW, you do have the ability to change the channels for each of the individual pads if you want to do more um, advanced things with MIDI, basically. Uh, the note off, sent or not sent, and that's basically hit a drum, the note is on. When the sample stops, the note is off. So if you're holding, say for example, a piano chord down, the velocity of the note is gonna continue until you release with the Strike Pro. This just will basically tell your, uh, your, your MIDI sequencer that's built into your DAW that it's sending the note or the note has now been turned off. And that will become important when you get into looking at cymbal chokes. So that is the majority of the settings you would need to worry about in your strike module. 
the last one I'll take a look at, and this is really only if you get problems or um, you know, you hit this symbol here and it triggers the tom that's right below it, or you hit the symbol and it triggers the ride symbol. This is something called crosstalk in the modules. So there is crosstalk receive, there's crosstalk send, and basically the gist of it is what's the likelihood that I hit this pad and it triggers the ride symbol underneath. So crosstalk send, how likely? If I hit this, it will trigger this. Crosstalk receive, how likely is it if I hit this ride, it's gonna trigger the symbol up here. So in the strike manual, it actually has it opposite for my brain. If you have these set to seven, so this is basically from zero through seven, seven means it's less likely crosstalk will be sent or received, and zero is it's more likely crosstalk will be sent or received. I've always just left this at default, but if you do do this and you um, are experiencing any kind of weird triggering, that's a setting that you can look for there as well. So the next is getting into mini mapping. So if I go into my DAW here, I've got two tracks that are set up. I've got the Logic drum kit here, and I've got the SSD5 from Steven Slate. So if I go here, and just hit record. So everything is mapped fairly well. If I go and do the exact same thing in Steven Slate, Things are mapped a little bit differently. So that's the fastest way to see how well your kit is set up. So if you're just wanting to play kind of the basic drums, it's set up fairly well, but there's some things obviously that will need to be changed through your MIDI mapping. The one I'm gonna look at is with your cymbal chokes. So if you can, I've got the Steven Slate track selected, hitting the ride, I'm choking the ride and you can hear. If I switch over to the Logic track, for example, it doesn't choke. So Steven Slate drums, and I would guess this would be the same for Easy Drummer and some of the other drum plugins, will actually allow you to MIDI learn and map those types of things. The Logic Drummer does not have a built-in ride choke. It does have a crash choke, but the way that it's actually set up, so you can hear the crash being triggered, if I choke it, it's actually playing the snare. So I would have to figure out how to map that. Now the hard part with that is if I go into voice, crash edge, go into MIDI, let's leave note chase off. So I only have the option to actually change the MIDI note for the crash edge, there's no option if I'm hitting this. It's hitting the snare, but I can't actually change that for this pad. If you notice the status bar up at the top, it's sending A sharp zero. The snare is sending D1. And the snare rim is sending E1. So that's something just to be aware of with the stock logic drums is that um, there isn't an ability to actually map that in a simple way compared to the Steven Slate. Now the good thing with the Slate plugin is that you can do this automatically. So you, it has a MIDI learn function. So for example, you can hear the ride symbol here. So it is choking it there. So in Steven Slate, for example, you can do this through MIDI mapping. So I've got the ride symbol here. If you scroll through, you'll see uh, highlighted or not grayed out is basically all the sounds that are mapped to it already. So the china is mapped to this note. The crash edge is matched to that one. Um, the hi-hat, you do get substantially more options with the Steven Slate plugin for customizing some of the settings for the hi-hat. Now here's the ride. So here's the ride bow tip, and there's the bell. 
and here's the there's the choke point. You can hear it. Now to set that up, this is very easy to do. You click on Ride Choke, which is the A Sharp 2. Click on MIDI Learn. It asks you to hit the MIDI, the one you want to use, and it's mapped. So that makes it a little bit easier to do the MIDI mapping if you're going to be doing those types of things. All right, so to wrap up recording MIDI with the Alesis Strike Pro, for me personally, I don't really use it. I only used it to learn how it worked, and then I used it on the first EP for my band only because I thought I might get some flexibility in post-production after the fact. So for example, if you're recording audio with the Strike Pro, the toms are outputted on one track, the cymbals are outputted on one track. So you have to set up all of your uh, panning, sounds, and everything in the module unless you want to get into a situation of doing crazy automation for processing that stuff after the fact. So I thought if I recorded the MIDI at the same time, I'd at least it would be easier if I wanted to say, process the high toms differently from the low toms, I could just select all those MIDI notes, copy those to a new track, and then I would get a little bit more freedom there. I didn't end up using it, but I can really see the power would be if you are using it in a live setting and you want to trigger other things, or if you want to trigger some automation in your DAW, you do have the ability and the flexibility to do that because you can send different pads through different MIDI channels. So you do get that, that kind of freedom. So leave a comment below if you're doing something cool with MIDI through the Strike Pro. But for me, I just strictly use the audio recording because I mostly use it for songwriting. So much like every other band, we're stuck in quarantine so we can't get together to write. We exchange stuff on WhatsApp basically. So anybody will send me uh, uh, some idea, I'll stick it in Logic, put it on loop and play along with it. The other thing is for different percussion elements, it's easier to use the patches in the Strike Pro and then just record that audio as opposed to messing around with remapping percussion elements depending on what drum plugin that you're using. So in the description below, you'll find some links to some other drum plugins you can use. And you'll also find links to the audio recording video that I did. So leave a comment, like, and subscribe. Thanks very much for watching. Again, every like and subscribe helps to grow the channel. So hope you enjoyed this and I will get my three year update video of owning the Strike Pro out. At some point, it just keeps pushing its way down the priority list. So again, thank you so much for watching. Like and subscribe. Stay safe, wear a mask, keep on rocking, and I'll see you on the next video.